Hi, my name is Daniela and I'm in sixth grade and I go to Riverside Elementary. And my question is, why did George Washington have slaves if he was against slavery? Yeah, so it can seem like a contradiction that somebody like Washington, who was opposed to slavery, could actually be a slave owner himself. And that was a contradiction that Washington recognized during his lifetime. He was quite aware that there was some hypocrisy involved in that. And there are a few reasons why Washington remained a slave owner throughout his life. The first is that Washington didn't become opposed to slavery until later on, after the Revolutionary War. Before that point, he had purchased a large number of enslaved people to grow his plantation. And by the 1780s, as he's growing opposed to slavery and really seeing the evils of the institution, he at that point owns several hundred enslaved people. So the question becomes, what is he going to do with those people? What is the solution that is going to get him out of this institution? And he had two choices, essentially. He could sell them or he could free them. At that point, he was opposed for moral reasons to selling enslaved people. So he turned towards looking to emancipate them. Some of the barriers that Washington encountered as he looked into freeing his slaves were financial. As a plantation, Mount Vernon operated with enslaved labor. And that was the really fundamental system for the economy in this entire region. And Washington knew that if he were to free his slaves, he would have to find another way to operate his plantation and another way to provide income for himself and for his family. And that might have necessitated really changing the way that he lived and potentially sacrificing a lifestyle that he had become accustomed to. So Washington, as he's considering freeing his slaves, doesn't seem to be willing to make a huge financial sacrifice in order to do so. We also know that an emancipation would have been fairly expensive for Washington. There was a law in Virginia that required slave owners to provide financial support to freed slaves who were too old or too young to support themselves. And this was so that those people didn't become burdens on their local communities. And so if he were to free his slaves, Washington would have to provide a large amount of money in order to support those individuals. And Washington, while he was quite wealthy in terms of land and other property, he actually didn't have a lot of cash. And so he would have had to come up with some way to get the money to finance an emancipation. And he did look into several ways of doing that by either renting or selling some of his land. Uh, but he wasn't able to find a solution that he really found acceptable. So that was another barrier. And finally, there was another reason why Washington delayed an emancipation. And that was the fact that he actually didn't own about half of the enslaved people who were here at Mount Vernon. They were actually owned by the estate of Martha Washington's first husband, and they were called dower slaves. And when Martha's first husband had died, as his widow, she received lifetime use of one third of his property, including slaves. And many of those people had come with her here to Mount Vernon. In the 40 years that she lived here with George Washington, they had married many of Washington's slaves and had families and children. And so when Washington is considering freeing his slaves, he knows that he doesn't have the legal authority to free the dower slaves. And he knew that separating families was one of the worst evils of slavery. And he's very concerned about the fact that those families would be separated if he chose to emancipate his own slaves. So Washington was opposed to separating families and he was very wary of that consequence of emancipating his own slaves. Ultimately, Washington chose to free his slaves in his will, where he put a provision that would emancipate them at Martha's death. And waiting until after both he and his wife died solved his financial issue because it meant that his estate could provide for the freed slaves. It didn't solve the issue of family separation, however, as the dower slaves remained in bondage after Martha died, even as their Washington family members went free. So as you can see, Washington really grappled with a lot of issues as he was growing more opposed to slavery over the course of his life. And he did make efforts to remove himself from the institution of slavery, and he considered freeing his slaves before he died, but he wasn't able to come up with a solution that he was happy with until after his death.